Are you terrified of losing? Are you scared of losing the house, the car, the relationship, even though they are not working anymore? We look at nature, and it's a constant cycle of letting go and renewal, letting go of the old so the new can blossom. We see it, we see it around us every day, but rarely do we choose it. Even though when we know it's the best thing for us. So now let me share with you my story of discovering the power of having nothing to lose. Imagine hearing the sound. Beep, beep, beep. That was the sound of the heart monitor measuring the life left to my father. Life was slowly leaving him, like a sand in an hourglass. I was terrified. I was angry. I was sad. Sat down at this strange hospital in this strange city of London, miles away from my home country, Libya. Me and my young brother and my parents have left a comfortable life in Libya to a comfortable but uncertain life in UK. As my dad's health got worse, we had hoped to find him the best treatment but hoped also to return back to Libya. But the news were the Libya that I know and loved was no more. The war had started. Now, with that news, my dad has faced a major stroke that left him laying in bed, not being able to speak, not being able to eat, not been able to move. He was my hero. He was my role model. He was my first love. And I was watching him in front of my eyes, suffering. I couldn't do anything about it. See, all my hopes and dreams have been crushed in front of my eyes. I had hoped to continue back, to continue my dentistry studies back in Libya. But my old life was fading just like my father. Have you ever felt that you're powerless, that you will ever lose it all? But not realizing with that loss, you might actually gain from it too. Peep, peep, peep. That sound remained with me, hunting me, even when I went home back from the hospital. It was the sound of losing, and I hated it at that point of my life. Now, at that, as the situation got worse in Libya and the war has gone bad, it became really clear to us that we can't go anytime soon. So we decided to apply for asylum. We became refugees. There's an estimate 82 million refugees worldwide, with now 5.7 million refugees from Ukraine, according to the UN Refugee Agency. People have lost their homes. People have lost their jobs. Sometimes they lost their loved ones because they were forced to lose it all, just like us. Have you ever been in that situation? And if you haven't, could you imagine how would that feel? Now, Looking back at that stage of my life, I faced losing my father. I faced losing my country. I faced losing certainty. I faced losing my identity. I faced losing myself. I resisted it all. Hold on in us. The voice in my head said, do not let go. But why do we hold on? Hold on to those whose time is up. Hold on to the good times. Now imagine holding on a ball in your hands really tight. How can anything enter your hand? But when you release it, you let go, you allow for the new and maybe even better to enter your life. So why do we hold on? 
My family application for the refugee status has been refused by the UK government. They wanted to send us all back home. But I was given a second, second chance. I was given the right to appeal, separate from my family, as I was over 18. In the court, I was sat down. The UK Home Office made it so clear that I can go back to Libya. I just need to relocate to a different part of the country. I said to myself, here we go, Inas. I'm going to lose again and be sent back home to a war zone without my strong father. The judge asked me, he said, do you have any last words? I don't know what to say. But I replied, I said, send me home. I don't care if I die. I accepted the loss. I even chose it. I've lost everything anyway, and I was fed up. A few months later, my loss was proven to be powerful, as I've been granted asylum. I have unknowingly tapped into the power of having nothing to lose. James Baldwin, a US activist, once said, the most dangerous creation of any society is a man or woman who have nothing to lose. We normally associate having nothing to lose as dangerous. You know, that Hollywood movie, a man out to avenge for his family, ready to blow everything up for justice. But what if that mindset, that power wasn't destructive? Jay Shiri, you know, he graduated 22 years old, he graduated college and decided that he's going to live as a monk across India and Europe. He gave everything up and shaved his head, lived out of his rucksack for three years. He embraced losing it all. But upon returning, he became one of the most significant influences around the world with millions of followers. Just because he chose to lose it all. Or Malala, a young Pakistani girl who's been shot in the face just for daring to go to school. She lost everything, almost lost her life. But she got reborn as something greater. Not for herself, but for millions of young girls around the world. Guys, there is something powerful about having nothing to lose. What if holding on, being afraid to lose, is the very thing that guarantees us a small life, a predictable life, a life without a purpose? We have it like we have the choice to hold on. You know, holding on is an illusion. How can we hold on to things that wasn't even ours from the first place? And that was evidence that my father is dead. Just a few months later, I finally lost him. Even though it was predictable, I was devastated. After that, my mom declared that we all gonna go back to Libya, even though I've been, I've been granted asylum. I was torn, as I didn't wanna leave my family, but I knew I have nothing to return to. There was something was telling me, Inas, you need to stay in London and discover what will be possible. See, going against my family wishes was so hard for me. A young, single Libyan girl in a strange country that didn't speak much English, didn't know no one, was an absolute no-no for them. But I had the taste of the power of having nothing to lose. So I decided to stay, and I refused my mom's wishes. What followed up was to challenge my new belief to its core. My family cut me off, emotionally and financially. I found myself in a strange country and I have to be make it by myself. Now, the reality of being alone really led me to depression. I thought about giving up my independence and going back to Libya. I even thought about giving up my own life. It, it was painful, 
I missed my family. I missed my country. I missed my father. But I remembered the power. And at that point, I said to myself, Inas, now you've lost it all. You've got nothing to lose. So I embraced the power. I made friendship. One person led to another. And I'm sure, like many of us here, found yourself in a strange place. You, you know, you found that doubt that it wasn't full of bad people, like my family feared. It was full of great people that was wishing for us to succeed. I found a job. I found a flat. I found friends. But I found something remarkable, something that I never thought of before. I found purpose. I found out my purpose was to inspire people, to support refugees, to connect women. Now, I discovered something really fundamental. On the other side of having nothing to lose was everything to gain. Is losing painful? Guys, you can trust me, it is. But what if the fear of losing is worse than the reality of the loss itself? How many of us lost relationships? How many of us lost money, jobs, friends? Did life stop? Did you die? Exactly. I was broke. I was homeless. I was alone. Not only I survived and I was fine, but I ended up making way for the life that I dreamed of. Now, being someone or having the power of having nothing to lose, it doesn't mean that you don't care about people. It doesn't mean that you no longer love people. It means that you love unconditionally and purposely. It means that you let go of attachment. It means that you live from faith, not from fear. Now, if we look at the history of this beautiful country, Macedonia, we see the loss of Yugoslavia. Many have feared it. Many have wished for it, but feared going through the pain, the heartache, the loss, the uncertainty. But throughout it all, this beautiful country was reborn. The, the fear of loss was worse than the reality. Now, I want to leave you with three points that you can take away with you today. The first point, losing is an inevitable. We cannot do anything about it. Trees lose, trees lose leaves, soil loses the moisture, the day loses the light. It's an inevitable part of life. Everything is borrowed, including our time in this life. The things that we value the most, our family, our loved one, everything is in a borrowed time, and eventually we have to give it back. We have to lose. The second point, now we're clear that losing is inevitable. All that we have is choice. We can choose to resist it and accept the pain that comes with resisting, or we can choose to embrace it and be grateful for the lessons, for the experiences, for the people that came to our life. We can choose to be grateful for this wonderful thing called life. The third point, with this mindset, embrace the fact that you have nothing to lose. And that will free you up to create the things that you truly desire, the business that you dreamed of, the career that you always wished, the relationship that nurtured your soul, you can embrace the fact that you've got nothing to lose, so you can truly be available to create a legacy that you can pass on to a future generation. To let go of attachment and live an authentic, purposeful, 
powerful life that opens up a sky of possibility. Peep, 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 no more. It reminds me of pain and loss. It reminds me of the power of having nothing to lose and everything to gain. A power that's available for you too. My name is Inasti Aiki and thank you. Thank you.